Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm Miss Gabby. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the program coordinator of Girls Inc. And this is? I am Miss Bianca. I am a program facilitator at Girls Inc. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. So we both are at Clay this year, or we've been at Clay this year, um, and we wanted to connect with you guys virtually. So this is going to be a virtual video um, focusing on our middle school girls. But if you are not a middle school girl, if you're a middle school girl watching it with your cousin who's younger, your sibling who is younger, that is also okay. We want to connect with you guys um, virtually. As you know, we haven't been in schools for a while, given um, the circumstances with COVID-19, and we want to make sure that we are still in contact with you all. Um, and so we're gonna talk about something today that we've talked about before in Girls Inc. Um, and that is healthy communication styles. Um, I think during this time of uncertainty, it's very important to man maintain good communication styles. Um, there's a lot of anxiety going around, a lot of just stress, and we don't wanna contribute to that with our um, communication styles. We wanna make sure we're communicating clearly and effectively and um, just, just getting across what we want to say to people um, during this time. Anything you want to add, Miss Bianca? I think we're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to get started. So as we talked about before, we're going to focus on three different communication styles and which ones are the best ones, which ones um, we're not going to try, try not to use. Um, so the first one is passive. Ooh, so I got something for that. Ooh passive. So passive means when someone is mainly interested in avoiding conflict, they may have feelings, needs, or desires, but they don't know how to express them, or they don't express them in a direct and clear way. So being passive, like these are some of the key words that Miss Bianca is showing. So we have avoiding conflict, they're a little bit more cautious, and it's very unclear. And so that is passive. The next one is aggressive. And aggressive is when someone expresses their feelings, needs, or desires um, in a hostile manner with no regard to other people's feelings, emotions, or desires. Um, so as you can see, some of the keywords for that are hostile. Um, aggressive communication can come across as very hurtful and not taking in other people's emotions into consideration. And the last one, and we're going to kind of hone in on this one, we're going to focus on this one for the duration of the video, and that is assertive communication. As you can see, it's in the green, so that means go. We're going to go for assertive communication, um, and it's when someone expresses their feelings, needs, or desires in an open and direct way. Um, so they're very clear in what they're saying, they're respectful, they're open and they're direct, um, and it's also just very clear. And so we're going to kind of talk a little bit of a girl chat style. Me and Miss Bianca are going to have a little bit of girl chat um, with each other and discuss a couple of questions. And if you guys um, resonate with any of the questions or you guys want to respond to any of the questions, feel free to do so in the comments below. Um, but so Miss Bianca, which of these communication styles is common for you? Yeah, so um, when I was younger, I was a little bit more passive and kind of didn't want like a whole lot of conflict and so I kind of stood in the background didn't really communicate it communicate what I needed or what I wanted um, but as I grew older I became more assertive I was very clear I was respectful to others during um, during school during work like any of those um, settings awesome yeah. how about yourself yeah, so for me, I think I was actually the opposite. I was very aggressive um, as a child. I was very much like, I want my way. It's my way or the highway, and I don't care how other people feel about it. Um, and so I think that just comes from it. And you, you know, when you communicate these ways, either passively or, or aggressively, um, you, you're damaging relationships. You know, you're, you're tarnishing relationships that you have with people, um, and it can be really harmful to you and to other people. And so I think as I got older, I recognized that. And so... Definitely now, um, I try to take more of an um, assertive approach. You know, I say what I want clearly. I say what I want um, just respectfully as best I can. I think um, we're never going to be perfect at these things. I think I still struggle with being a little bit more aggressive, especially in times like this where I'm around the same people all the time and I can get easily irritated or easily agitated. And we're in such small proximity to people or close proximity to people. Um, 
So I'm not perfect at it, but I definitely do try to practice um, a sort of communication. And which ones do you feel like your family and your friends um, use to communicate with you or to communicate with each other? Right. Um, as far as communication styles, I feel like my family definitely ranges from like passive to aggressive to assertive. Like I feel like they are all on different range levels. And so I feel like although it is all very different, like I still try to communicate in my assertive way and so if one of my family members is being passive or aggressive um i tell my family members like for example passive like if somebody's asking me for something or trying to ask for something but isn't really clear i kind of ask them okay what do you mean by that could we communicate that differently same thing with aggressive like if i'm feeling a little hurt by it or a little offended by it I'm kind of like okay is there another way we could communicate that exactly and when you're communicating assertively who do you feel like it's the easiest to communicate assertively with and who do you feel like it's the hardest to communicate assertively with Ooh, good question so I feel like it's definitely easier with family and friends because you're um you trust them um they're the people that you trust, people that you're honest with, that you're in close proximity with, and um, people that you love, right, mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And so it's definitely a lot easier to be assertive with them. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, for sure. And who would you say it's the hardest to communicate assertively with? Oh, yes. Um, let's see. Definitely, it could be a little challenging like in work settings or mm -hmm. school settings, just because you don't really know the person completely. And so yeah. um, the best thing you can do is just respect people and, um, and, and try to feel comfortable in what you um, need and what you want. Yeah. yeah. I think when there's that like authority level, it can be like, oh, like I don't want to like get in trouble or I don't want to um, risk this relationship going sour if I communicate something assertively. Um, and so I think just like you said, being confident and being respectful are all you can do um, in these situations. And I think it's really important, um, like I said, during this time, we're in very, very close proximity with people for extended periods of time um, to communicate healthy. Um, boundaries to so create healthy boundaries whether that's physical boundaries right like creating your own space we talk about in growth thing take space and make space that doesn't only mean physical space right that means emotional space so letting people know when you need a second um, when you need a break when you need to just retreat to your room or even go to the bathroom and just like sit there for a second um, just to have that space for yourself and giving people that space as well I think for me um, I'm so extroverted. I love being around people and all of my roommates are introverted. So I need to be respectful of that and know that they need their time to be by themselves and to process and to um, create that space. So me giving them that space, but also me taking that space for myself to learn from their, their different communication styles. Um, so yeah, I think it's important to be able to communicate these things during this time. Um, so now, Miss Bianca, we're going to have a few scenarios, and I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to read you a scenario, and then you're going to tell me how you plan on communicating in these scenarios in an assertive way. Does that sound good? Yes. Awesome. So scenario one, and I think Ooh, we have a little, that? what? Scenario <laughs> one. Cool. So scenario one says, setting boundaries with your siblings in the house when you need a break or you need some space. Ooh, that's definitely a good scenario. And so for me, I definitely have a big family. And so um, just reminding them like, okay, I need a little bit of space during this time um, because I'm at work. I know that we're all here in the house, but um, if you could just give me a little bit of this time and then after I'm done with work, then we could get together, maybe watch a movie or um, 
do something fun. Like the other week, um, I was making slime with my little cousin. And so oh. um, she was teaching me the ropes. <laughs> yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah, I really like how you said what you needed and then said when you were ready to re-engage. Like during this time, like this is this is um, Bianca time, this is me time. And so once that time is up, like we can reassess if I am ready to re-engage or I'll be ready to re-engage after this time. So that's very clear and that's very um, direct. And I really, I really admire that. Um, so I'm definitely learning that in um, our own lives. And like we said before, if you guys have situations that you guys have come across, make sure you put them in the comments below. Tell us how you have used the site of communication or if you need advice, put those in the comments below as well. We'll respond to those, but we're gonna move on to scenario two. Ooh. And scenario two, woo, woo, woo. Woo. scenario two. And it says, someone is sending repeated, unwanted text messages, FaceTimes, or phone calls. And I think this is a super interesting one because we're in a time where we're not at school every day. We're not at work every day. And so people want to connect, right? And like I said earlier, like I'm super extroverted. So I love connecting with people. Um, but sometimes people don't like that. So how would you then communicate that assertively? Ms. Yeah, so um, you just reminded me of the word extrovert. And so I feel like I fall between introvert and extrovert. I'm very, like, sometimes I could have um, times where I want to be social with everybody, but then there's times where I really need my me time and I really need to reset in a way. And so I think definitely, you know, if I'm getting unwanted calls or um, text messages or FaceTime, I definitely communicate that with the person like, oh, you know what, I'm working right now, but if you want to chat about it or talk about it later, um, again, like once I'm done with work, we could talk about it. Or once I'm done with schoolwork, we could talk about it. Or once I'm done with, if I'm reading, um, after I'm reading, or being very specific on when is a good time to do that. Yeah, exactly. So like communicating openly, right? Like I need this time to myself. Um, or even just letting them know like, hey, like I can't FaceTime right now. I can't text you right now. Like I will respond and I will FaceTime you back when I have a free moment. But until then, just please, you know, um, do not send any more messages. I will get back to you. Um, so I think that's awesome. And so the final and last scenario, scenario three is, scenario three says, reaching out to a friend or a family member when you feel isolated or need to connect. Right. So this is a really, really good one because um, I think for me, it's definitely, um, it makes me feel better and it makes me happier to hear like my family members, whether it's um, their laughs or whether it's a phone call to my parents or something in that way. And so I think as far as when it comes to my parents, I'll, I'll just let them know like, hey, like I really need to talk to you. I'm feeling this kind of a way. And so it would be really nice to hear your voice yeah. or to see your face if it's FaceTime or um, even just communicating like, oh, I found this funny video and it reminded me of you, like thinking mm -hmm. of you, maybe we could connect soon or something like that. And so definitely communicating that you want that connection mm -hmm. because it's a healthy connection, right? It's, a, it's one that really would make you feel good. Yeah. And I love what you said about um, what you need, right? You said it'd be great to see your face. I think a lot of times when we don't communicate um, assertively, people end up giving us things that we maybe didn't necessarily need. So if I say like, hey, like, I'm really needing to connect, that can mean a bunch of things, right? Like that can mean, oh, I need a hug or, oh, I need to see your face or, oh, I need you to send me some words of affirmation and you to send me some positive thoughts. But I think when we say like, hey, like I really need to see your face and we need to laugh, like, you know, being able to communicate <laughs> clearly, you know, what you need 
Um, sometimes you do need a hug and being able to say like, hey, like I really could use a hug right now. I'm a little overwhelmed and stressed or hey, I really would love, love you to send me some memes or some funny videos so that we can laugh. Um, <laughs> I really love what you said about that and just being able to say clearly what you need. Um, and so I want to pose a question out to you viewers to put in the comments below. Um, this question is, what are ways that you can practice assertive communication um, at home? And we've already kind of given you guys some examples, but just letting people know when you need space physically and emotionally and asking for that clearly and respectfully. I think during these times, we're all under stress. Um, we're all a little bit anxious. There's a lot of uncertainty. So I want to make sure that you guys are getting the um, advice you need, but also, you know, practicing it, practicing giving other people space and um, taking space for yourself. Um, do you have anything else to add, Miss Bianca? Yeah, I think I would just add is like, um, yeah, definitely practice being assertive. Um, even if you want to practice in the mirror a little bit before you tell your loved ones or, um, yeah, just definitely try to, to try to communicate that clearly and, and be confident because we're all strong, smart, and bold, and we know how to as we talk about in the girl code and you brought it up miss gabby is you know take space make space and that definitely goes in relation to what we've been talking about here so yeah, yeah. awesome so remember be kind to one another be respectful um take space and make space and again we just want to thank you guys so much um, for tuning in and watching this. We miss you guys so much. Um, we can't wait to be back in the Girls Inc. space with you guys, hopefully um, soon. Um, but in the meantime, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, um, and just remember to be kind to one another. Do you have any signing off words, Miss Yanka? Much love, much hugs. And we miss you. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you guys. <laughs> Remember in the comments below, share how you guys have been practicing or plan to practice um, healthy communication with your loved ones. Send us any questions you guys might have and stay well and we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>